I've got quite the story to share with you all, and no, it's not of Trevor's vasectomy. Whoa! Dude, I love gay people now! Oh, we're, we're a good guy, we're trying to save the kids. Look, no. we're saving you! <laughs> You're saving! <laughs> okay, so I was born in... Currently live in not... Welcome to the first ever episode of Goobers and Screens Book Club. I am Hello. here joined by Kyle. <laughs> Kyle, say hi to them. Hello, everybody. Yeah, and so this is our series where Kyle and I do what we did anyways, and we record it because I have a microphone now. Isn't that so yeah, fancy, I'm Kyle? Discord. Yeah, I'm, I'm going into Discord. Yeah, and so this is the first ever series recorded all, um, all remotely. Loons does not exist and will never exist. And yeah, so today we're going to be talking about Black Clover. Black Clover is a series that Kyle and I certainly have a thought or two on. Now, our first series was going to be um, Hunter Hunter, and that's going to be the next series. But we finished up Black Clover. We had like 100 chapters left. We we're like, let's just get through this for reasons we'll discuss. We have, we have, we have some thoughts on Black Clover. Mm -hmm. um, and we just decided, let, why not record it? And so yeah, here, we, we are, here we are. You know, we were going to talk about it anyways. It's just like, you know, might might as well. Yeah, for, for some context, we've we've been hosting our own little book clubs for other series. Uh, I won't spoil which ones just in case we do end up talking about them. But for, for a long time, we've just got on phone calls, talked about uh, 20 or so chapters what we read just had thorough discussions about it and we just decided that we wanted to record it and see what <clears throat> people would think about our opinions on it and unfortunately black clover is the one we're starting with it's it's not yeah. our favorite <laughs> that that that's the that is the very unfortunate part about it <clears throat> yeah so what we're going to be talking about uh since usually we talk every 20 or so chapters on it since we read like 100 i just made i just typed down a bunch of notes about stuff that happened so we could keep on track and have thorough discussion about what happens starting from chapter 230 after the time skip but before that just a quick little overview of our thoughts on black clover as a whole mm. i personally would describe it as an aggressively average series <clears throat> we'll probably talk about everything before the time skip at another point but <clears throat> before the time skip i thought the series was okay uh it had it had a had some high high low lows started out pretty average <clears throat> uh around chapter 150 is when it started to wear on me chapter 214 oh we'll talk about that yeah 214 <laughs> bro <laughs> but uh we we enjoyed we've had fun reading it we, we've also been sort of frustrated but for the spade kingdom arc that we're going to be talking about uh we we in, well, at least I enjoyed it. So, Brandon, what are your thoughts on the everything before Chapter 230? Well, let's see what you call it. I'm going to look up the, the Black Clover arc, just just so we just so we can remember. That's fair. You know, and we can kind of go through arc, arc by arc on a general basis. Yeah, yeah so well, Black Clover, I watched the anime whenever it was first coming out. I think it was back in 2018. Right? It's one of the first ever shonen arcs that I that I ever watched. Um, the shonen series, <clears throat> sorry the first ever shonen series is that i ever watched and so going into black clover i was i was very excited i was really i was ready to get into it um i was just you know i was excited because you know, i had all these good memories of it and uh, you know i've been hearing some very good things about it we don't we'll spade, spade kingdom we'll get into that but yeah so we'll, we'll just we'll just go we'll just go arc by arc we'll just go arc by arc so the first one is the magic magic knight's intro as far as intros for shonens goes, I mean it's solid. I, I think remembering what Kyle and I said about it, you know, we both at least well, me, I can say what I personally, you know, I, I thought it was very good. You know, I, I remembered, I remembered it. Um, I like, I like the whole grimoire system. You know, talking about, you know, which is all, all this stuff we're talking about later, right? I like the whole grimoire system, and I think the introduction of Asta and Yuno as kind of deuteragonists 
like well obviously you know shonens have like you know the mc and their rival uh i do think that black clover takes a somewhat unique approach to it i haven't seen every shonen right i haven't you know I, i'm not gonna pretend that i have but i the the setup of it was interesting and to me to me it was unique um and the whole you know entering the thing and then going and getting chosen anti-magic and all that getting us to join the black holes i mean it that as far as intro arcs go solid you know i yeah i, I like the arc uh my experience with the black clover anime was slightly different about a year or so ago i watched the first 14 episodes didn't like it or hate it just fell out of it for natural reasons but i i enjoyed the beginning to it i i also think asta's powers in this world are pretty cool uh having having your magic be anti-magic and having to fight an upward an upward battle to be recognized i, I thought that was a really great introduction for what asta wanted to be uh you know well, we'll get to him too as a yeah, dragon. We'll, we'll we'll talk about you know later. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to him. Not not a huge you know guy, but I did like the establishment of the Black Bulls and getting to meet all the members, and the future arcs that unfold with them were pretty interesting too. And so, what's the next arc that happens? The next arc. Next is the the dungeon exploration arc. Oh wait, wait, no, no. Wasn't there one before it where they went to a village? Um, no. <clears throat> It was with Magna, Noel, and Asta. Oh yeah, no, I guess that is part of the. That's part of the. the, the magic oh, yeah, intro it, I guess I guess it's not its own thing. Yeah. So the the intro thing. No, yeah, you no, know, it's cool. You know, I like Magna. You know, we'll you know we'll, we'll get into it, but you know, yeah, we'll, we'll have more it. to say on Magna later. But especially his introduction. You know, I really liked it. I, you know, I really enjoy the Black Bulls. You know, I always have. I remember them very fondly. I remember Magna very fondly. And I, I thought it was a really just a really solid intro. I mean, again, I think it, it, one really thing, solid intro for a shonen. One thing that helps with Black Clover compared to a lot of other shonen with the wide cast is, <clears throat> at first, I think a lot of the Black Wolves had what you could consider obnoxious character traits, but they do start to grow on you later on, and they don't stay like that permanently. <clears throat> for the most part. For, for the most part, for the most part. but... A lot of the characters you meet definitely either they change for they change for the better which i think is a lot of them some of them stay relatively the same or a couple of them get slightly more obnoxious like finroll in my opinion yeah fin finroll kind of gets the <laughs> by the way if, if there is any other spoilers for for any other series i will have put it at the beginning because because we might talk about some other series you know you know comparing them. <laughs> Finroll with kind of, Shonen, Finroll kind of gets the Sanji treatment a little bit. Yeah, with with Shonen, I think it's fair to compare and contrast its writing to other Shonen. Yeah, definitely. They're all in the same genre. <laughs> but oh, then, yeah. yes, you said the next one was the dungeon exploration. Yeah, the that dungeon happened. exploration arc. I, you know, <clears throat> I I liked it. You know, we got the introduction to some more mainstays like uh, Mimosa, um, and. In the Diamond Kingdom too, we got to see yeah. them really on. And you Although, didn't really get to see them much later on whatsoever, but you know they they, they, they yeah, exist. Uh, sorry, you're, you're cutting out. What was that? No, what you call it? Oh, I'm cutting. That's not good if I'm cutting out. Um, I was for a second. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the Diamond Kingdom exists. Yeah, you have mostly of Klaus, <laughs> though he he doesn't do too much later on. I mean, you know, he he's yeah, he, he's a character there. He he does stuff. <laughs> Oh, we also get introduction to Sorry, elements. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, and then Yuno gets his um gets the wind spirit. And then Asta gets his second sword. Yeah, he does. And then he doesn't get a third sword until the Goombani. We'll cover what that is later. Whoa, but one thing I'll get to the Goombanic with now. <clears throat> um considering and I'll elaborate more on this once we actually talk about it, but I'm sort of disappointed with the direction that the Diamond Kingdom took in the series. I thought the Diamond Kingdom would be a lot more prominent, but they simply shown up to be defeated. Yeah, and, and you know, like like we'll we'll get into that whenever the the wider world is revealed. <clears throat> yeah, but even Post but for like right now, for right now, the the saddest thing to say is in this current arc, the second arc of the series is when the Diamond Kingdom is the most formidable. Yeah, yeah, that, that's. <laughs> It, you know, it, it is sad. Talk about future instances. 
like they just become more and more of like pushovers or jokes mm-hmm. yeah so i mean you know the first you know quote, quote unquote two arcs you know the the magic knight intro whatever the first arc includes the village that's su- it's super solid <laughs> I I would describe the dungeon exploration arc as mid. It's it's all right. right. I'm, like, right with Mars was interesting enough, but it was it like typical shonen in its in typical fashion. It has to establish some low stakes early on. It can't do anything too interesting. It just needs time to develop, and that's what I saw the dungeon arc as. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I still think it's just. I don't know. I mean, it were it definitely works, and I think it does set up some interesting stuff. But I also think that kind of, like, you know, being being caught up to the story does affect our viewpoint of it. That's that's fair. Yeah. I think I think just looking at it objectively, it's still solid. You know, I mean, it, it's still it's still a very solid show in art. Mm-hmm. Alrighty, what's up next? We have. Dungeon exploration arc. To... We have oh yeah the uh, the the royal the royal capital assault arc. Oh yeah, we get the, our first introduction to the eye of the midnight sun. Yeah, and to the wizard king. We <coughs> have we oh man Kyle, we haven't even talked about the big wizard king. Not not two fourteen, but man, I'm so interested <coughs> to hear your thoughts on that. The well, wizard king Julius Nova Chrono, bro. I I really like the wizard. I right. think he's a great character. I think that for the first 213 chapters, he is handled very well. <laughs> and I, yeah. I would even go so far as to say, I think for the 331st chapter, he's handled well. We can get into all that later, Kyle. I, I'm certain you have a thought or two on that. The first, I, if I, nothing else, for the first 213 chapters, he is handled well. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, Klaus is there, you know. They they fight some guys. Um, we get introduced to the to one of the guys that you know kind of helped take the series down a peg for us with um ra- no rades rat rat raids rat rades. I don't know. Oh, that's the guy. He he was the one with the like corpse control magic. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And I you know I enjoyed. So, oh, and we got introduced to a Fuegolian and a Leo. Well, since we're going to be talking about it later anyway, let's just explain why the corpse control guy took down the series for us. Yeah, <laughs> right might now. as well. So, well, no, no, we we'll talk about that whenever we get to two fourteen. Oh, okay, yeah, because that that does tie into some of the. Yeah, it, it ties into two fourteen. That that because we over. when we get started here, we'll we'll be going. <laughs> we'll, we'll be going if we get started here. Um, but yeah, we we get play goalie and we get my my favorite quote from Black Clover. Which is either something along the lines of being weak isn't something to be ashamed of. Staying weak is. It's good, you know. It really it establishes Fuegolian <coughs> as like as like a good character and how he, you know, he's a magic knight captain, which at this point is still like like whoa, like way off in the distance for for you yeah. Know, from the reader and it also helps that he's telling it to Noel, the character that needs it. Yeah, and you know, Noel, we haven't touched on her much because she hasn't done much done so far. Much. Um. I, I remember her intro. I was like, oh, they should have at least had two chapters for it. You know, but what you call it? I'll, I'll say this much. I think Noelle is one of the better female protagonists. Not like a top protagonist. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah. Not Above far, average. She's, she's, she's handled really well. Yeah, surprisingly. Uh, <laughs> considering like the author's on, track record with protagonists. <laughs> yeah, early on she doesn't do much but the more the, sh- the story expands and opens up the more we get to see noelle as a character open up because early on she's the she's the one with like she has a lot of potential that's that's how to describe her she's yeah, the yeah the of potential. she just can't control her magic and the more training and control she has the more formidable she becomes and the stronger of a personality she becomes too uh uh-huh. and so then we have Fuegolian. He's he's taken away by Licht, and he loses his arm. I don't know. He's put out of this, and he's put out in the series until later. Out and of then, commission. Well, we will talk about Lion Mommy. I cannot. I cannot wait to get on the Lion Mommy. <laughs> and um, then after this was the cave, right? Where they where the Eye of the Midnight Sun starts abducting children and taking them to a cave to drain their magic. Yeah, bro. The cave arc. Let's see. Let's see. What 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 is the official <laughs> the official name for? I think it's uh, Eye of the Midnight Sun. 
Um, Eye of the Midnight Sun and Counter Arc, yeah. Yeah. The Cave it's Arc. A this, this is where I thought I ended with the anime. But yeah. I had actually, I, I watched the next two arcs after this, if I remember. So, <clears throat> at least with the Cave Arc, just to speed things along, it was a, it was a fine introduction to the Eye of the Midnight Sun, <clears throat> uh, having seen, wasn't it Yami that showed up and helped win the day? Yeah, no, it was super cool. You know, the the first fight was a, was a bit of a slog. You know, with the with the snow guy and the and the other one, and then the snow guy did. I don't know if you noticed, Kyle. The snow guy did come back later in Faith Kingdom. Yeah, I saw him. I I didn't recognize him at first until I saw him use the snow magic. I was like, yo, I was like, it's that guy. Like, okay, but they. Did, I was like, okay, they didn't just forget about it. I I thought he did. But isn't this where the magic gems are introduced? Magic gems. Yes. Not yes. Yeah, 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 I get. It's not like Steven Universe. Okay, okay. This is where, um, if they're listening, uh, we're going to bring on a guest on onto, onto our, onto our t- Yeah, yeah. He knew he was being summoned. All right, Cade. Um, uh, here's here, uh-huh. uh, here's your question. What do you think the, the the magic gems in Black Clover will do? Uh, will they uh-huh. a? No, I'm giving you your options. I'm giving you your options. Uh-huh. All right. Um, would you think they will a? Make Asta and you know share a passionate gay uh, kiss scene, right? Do you think they will B um, cause the utter reincarnation of every elf, or do you think they will C instate the United States as a global presence into the Black Clover world? <laughs> this is a really hard question. <laughs> um, now. If this, as as the Steven Universe expert in in this, if this were a Steven Universe filler arc, um, the answer would have to be all three answers. But I don't believe that is in the, the case that this story is going. So I am going to unfortunately choose. It's going to be B. Revive all the elves. Yay! False. It's the Goombaning, dude. It's the Goombaning. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here, you little scam. Thank you for having me. Get out <laughs> no of here, problem. you little scam. No Thank you for joining us. So, <clears throat> yeah, this is in this point in the series, we get introduced to the concept of the Eye of the Midnight Sun want these magic crystals. And the reason that they want them that is revealed later on is they want to reincarnate all the elves, or at least Licht does, or Padri, Licht. We'll, yeah, we'll get we'll that get, We'll get there. We'll get <clears throat> there. As of now, the good guys want the magic uh, thingamabobs, <clears throat> or the MacGuffins is what you'd call yeah. it. And I, before we read these newer chapters, this is where I said Black Clover peaked at the Underwater Temple arc. This is an and Underwater I, Temple. This is an Underwater Temple. This is Cave Arc. Cave oh, Arc. Was, and, was, yeah. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was the one that thought they were the same, Kyle. That's not your, that's, that's my character trait. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, so, I thought it was a super solid introduction. You know, you get to meet Veto, Fana, and um, Raya, Licked. <coughs> he formally introduced to Licked. Um, it's just, it, it's solid. Um, you know, I, I, I like it. Yeah, I <laughs> I mean, it's the cave arc, bro. What can I say? We get to see Yami for the first time, like, fighting and stuff. If it's, and it's, if it's cool. Not- this, this is kind of where, and the Underwater Temple arc is where it really shines, is where we get to see what I consider to be the greatest strength of early Black Clover, and that is how Asta's anti-magic interacts with everything around him. <coughs> yeah. Because, uh, I mean, we'll talk about this oh. later, but it, it gets to be just, oh, I'm stronger than you, what you call it. But originally, yeah. whenever we first get into kind of some more of these serious fights in Black Clover, like, it's I think I think it's handled very well. Oh, it's, it's a great it's a great system with being able to cut through, deflect, and it doesn't just turn into objective power scaling. And yeah. one thing I do want to mention is, <clears throat> if it's not obvious, it is slightly harder for us to think of so much to say about these old arcs because it, we, it's been a while since we've read them and we have the uh-huh. pre like the recent 100 on our brain i just wanted to throw that in this is <laughs> this is just a recap episode in case you've never seen black clover but still for yeah. some reason <laughs> want to listen to sue to, to to some rant oh my gosh i can't talk some two random guys talk about it right yeah we're, and but, we're just recollecting our thoughts on it too, so we can better go into, like, remembering stuff going into the our discussion of the final. Battle. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so for the underwater temple, uh, here's here's why I say Black Clover peaked at it. Um, a oh, underwater temple yeah. is the next. Oh, after the cave? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure there's an arc in the middle. Uh, check. Okay, okay, no, no, it is. 
It is, but it's kind of kind of half and half because they're up on the land first, you know. They have the beach episode. Do you do you want to talk? They do have the beach episode. I mean, it shows, <laughs> it has Noel's character growth, dude. It is important. They, they have a built-in beach episode, which I thought was pretty interesting. For mm-hmm. you know, mo- most shonens will. I mean, they, they'll throw it in there, but a lot of them will just have the obvious filler episodes. This one actually did help Noelle's character because she trained with somebody who we later know is a person who is from the Underwater Temple. I forget her name. I know Cajono. she's the... Hmm? Cajono, I'm pretty sure. Cajono. And then what's the what's the dude's name? The, the brother? Some, some bro. <laughs> it's some. <laughs> yeah. But she did have the slight training, and she... Here's here's what happened from what I remember. They need to get underwater, and Noelle is a water mage. She was going to use the spell Sea Dragon's Lair, I believe, and help them get down below through the strong magic region. If she failed, yeah. they'd all die. True. <clears throat> so, I forget exactly what training she did, but she trained with Kahono on the beach. Yeah, it and was magic her- control. Magic control, yes, and it helped her better control her magic. Since so far, she hasn't really been able to do much attack magic. So she just helped her get a better control of it. So they go to the underwater temple and we get the Fortnite arc, at least for the first couple of uh, chapters. Because they did describe it as a battle royale. I thought it was funny to describe that as Brandon when we first read it. Dude, it's like the Fortnite arc in um, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. <clears throat> so he, we'll have to talk about that at some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, at least for me, just so people know ahead of time, one of my favorite aesthetics in anything is ice aesthetic. A close second is water. I really like seeing the underwater temple and all the creatures it had. I thought the premise was interesting where they had at first, I, I always love when arcs start off as like survival fight games and then it turns into a third party interrupting and they have to suddenly stop their infighting and work together to take down the bigger threat. <clears throat> and it was very simple. Split them up into different 1v1s or 1v2s or whatever. And then have Veto show up, throw into all their plans, and make it to where Yami can't help, and they had to rely on their own strengths, at least for the majority of the fighting against Veto. Yeah, and then and then you get what is you know I I'm, I I finished this series. I'm still gonna say it. Asta, Finroll, and Vanessa versus Veto is my favorite fight in the series. <clears throat> it's one of the best fights in Black Clover simply because one of Black Clover's best strengths early on is teamwork. And I and I know whenever people hear like teamwork and show and think friendship is magic, we'll cover that later for Black Clover because there was a lot of it. Yeah. But or some of it. But at least for this point, I'm a I'm a sucker for weaker people working together overcoming stronger opponents. I, I'm not a huge fan of, oh, I'm just objectively stronger. You can't fight back. Seeing Finroll, Vanessa, the the spatial mage and string magic user, help Asta, the one with the anti magic, be able to actually fight against Veto, one of the best fights in in Black Clover. It's hard to explain from reading it in manga panels, <clears throat> but it just, I mean it was it's, it's just so good, and yeah, it has sheer, I mean even just it, the paneling of the manga like it flows really well. Just oh, also you know everything else that happened before it, like uh, Magna and Luck trying to fight. Noel gets to launch her first Sea Dragon War attack, and it rips off Veto's arm. Like it, he does. She does the Veto what Vegeta does the Cell. It whenever Cell first becomes perfect, just people would understand that one if they see Dragon Ball. Just tear a giant chunk off him. Yeah, and it it really it, it it's so good because it shows like a combination of powers. But not in like the way that later Black Clover does it. You know, it's like well, on their own, Vanessa and Finral wouldn't stand a chance. Same with Asta. But whenever you combine their powers in the way that they do it and that strategy, that's what allowed them to beat that time. And, and that's what that's that what that's what was so good about it. Because like I really, and, you know, or just early Black Clover in general, the whole teamwork element was handled very well. I think. And yeah, one the, the thing the series definitely lost it as it went. Yeah, the, the, one of the better parts of early Black Clover is, and I know that, I know that this term, as someone who's actually studied like literature, I know it's thrown out a lot. The Deus Ex Machina, uh, in turn, in like typical use of it, where people call it as like a, they use it to describe an ass pull. Black Clover doesn't have a lot of those early on, so in this fight had none of that either. It was just pure using the cards that the characters had and they were dealt with against another character who was much more powerful and it was them working together with their own powers that let them survive long enough to where Yami could show up and help them 
Yeah, and it, I mean, it's just super good. And uh, we we will touch on this later in a couple of different places. Veto died at the end. Okay, yeah, well, we're going to put a pin in that. At, at the time, I appreciated it as a show of maturity for the writer to show, okay, <laughs> we're getting into it. At the time, oh, yeah, and Asta hurt his arms. I forgot that was a plot point. Yeah, he <laughs> yes, hurt his arms. Ties into, this ties into... The, what we would probably call the worst pre time skip arc, the Witch's Forest. Yes. Because the, the premise of the Witch's Forest is simple. <clears throat> Asta's arms, after fighting against uh, Veto, and in a moment that we thought could have been better, where he's sitting by a cliffside and he's thinking about his broken arms, he's like, you know what? It'll all work out. It's all good. It's all fine. Yeah, uh, and it's like the, the entire <laughs> Black Bull is like, man, like, whatever. And I was like, no, it's going to be good. And then they like all go and it's like, and, then, and like, oh, that's what makes them cry. You know, I understand it, right? I get it. Get it. I do. I'm not, I'm not like, oh, he doesn't get it. He doesn't understand. No, I understand it. And it is bad. Right? I mean, I, well, this ties into my opinion of Black Clover. My overall opinion is that it is a simple series that occasionally tries to pretend that it's more. Yeah, I ha it has its moments. It really does. Oh, we'll the, definitely the get end, to them. Yeah, I I enjoyed what do you call it? The end of one forty five. I think it was one forty five was a great chapter. Um, but what happened at one forty five? Pretty sure that was Julius's death. <laughs> lol, 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 lol. <laughs> yeah. Um, but at um, least for this early part, usually you want to give your characters interesting development early. On. You don't want them to stagnate, and after having his arms broken, being told he'll never be able to fight with the only tool he can get, it doesn't discourage Asta. And you, see, you could argue it both ways. I'm definitely in the boat of saying I wish that was a moment of weakness for Asta, something relatable. You want your characters to be, at least in you know modern shonen, you want them to be relatable in some way. And it just didn't feel relatable that Asta broke his arms, wasn't able to fight. And was just confident that it would all work out. <laughs> yeah, it, w it was an opportunity to have some deeper character development and to have some deeper characterization for Asta, and it just it just didn't happen. It was wasted potential, and that that's what disappointed me <clears throat> personally. And, and that's what I told Kyle whenever we talked about it. I was like, I was like, I was like, I'm just really disappointed in this. And you know, we're disappointed in stuff later, which is horrors too, but especially <laughs> that because that could have been such a cool moment of characterization for Asta in showing that. I mean, I mean, he's human too, right? I mean, like, like I get it. It's his character. He's optimistic, right? Uh, trust me, trust me. I've read all of Black Clover. I get it. I, yeah. But like, just just because his character is optimistic, doesn't mean he can't have moments of weakness. I mean, Forrest without without Campbell. without getting too heavily into it. Yeah, I think we're about to bring up the same thing, Luffy. Luffy. I mean, man, you, you want to look at optimism? Look at Luffy. And I mean, look look at Post Marine for it, dude. Yeah, like, like it, obviously, what happened to Asta isn't on the same scale of what happened to Luffy at Marine. <clears throat> no, but it could right? he could have had a lower scale reaction like Luffy did post Marine Ford. Exactly, <laughs> Luffy's reaction post Marine Ford was so realistic. Luffy actually showed. I mean, Luffy is you know as as easygoing and, and as what you call it, like ooh, uh, but, uh, king of the pirates. Blah, 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 as <laughs> he's you get. more Asta than Asta is. He is. He's. I mean, to call him a better Asta is an insult to his character. But I guess in the context of the conversation. Before before we escape what we're trying to say, Asta, same with you know, they just don't have, as protagonists to do, do dragonist moments of relatability. I there's nothing that makes me interested in them because it's simply that they'll get into fights <clears throat> through the friendship of other people or befriending the bad guys, <clears throat> which is Forrest. Uh, they end up winning, and there's no other deeper layers to them except for that early on. Yeah, and you know the haha funny meme, guys. I swear they get good at chapter two hundred and seventy, guys. I swear, it's, it's true for Black Clover, unfortunately. <clears throat> at least in my opinion, it's not fact. Yeah. I, I mean, we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. Developing or um, worth being interested in this early on. It's it's just it's a wasted potential, and it won. Like at the time, I was like, I <laughs> hope this isn't the signs of stuff to come. And man, was it was it signs of stuff to come? So let, let's get into Witches Forest proper. <laughs> So here's the simple explanation, which is Forrest. Uh, 
other characters are out looking for ways to fix Asta's busted up arms. And Vanessa, in a move I think is somewhat wasted, goes to the Witch's Forest and it's a one and done. The Witch's Forest is described as the home of some of the more powerful magic users in the land the, the witches and it's an exclusively all it's sort of like amazonian all females no males allowed amazon and, dude amazon lily bro like like bro like dude it's like worse, it's worse amazon lily <clears throat> they they show up there vanessa tries to bargain with isn't the witch queen her mother yeah yeah as far, as, far as i remember i was never brought up again she well. tries to bargain with the witch queen to fix asta's arms but before that um, the Diamond Kingdom invades the Witch's Forest and in a move I think is really silly <clears throat> they have four characters in a row that go from antagonist to protagonist each of which is more progressively unrealistic than the last you gotta love it you gotta <clears throat> love Witch's Forest dude but here, oh so my who, gosh. All, who all is there because it's okay so, up, so what you call it Vanessa, Noelle Vanessa, Asta, who else is there? Finroll? I think Finroll. And then, oh, another thing that we didn't like, they just introduced characters from some sort of other book. Yes, oh my gosh, that was so dumb, dude. Yeah, so you want to explain that one? So, like, apparently there was, like, some side novel or, or whatnot. I don't, I don't, we didn't know where there was time to do it because Black Clover is just arc, 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 arc. There's no downtime between them. But there's apparently, like, a side novel or something that had, like, their entire story. And, like, in this arc, he tried to incorporate those characters as if they just existed. And, you know, obviously, you could say, well, yeah, they do exist. But that'd be like introducing Masked Deuce from the Ace's Story side novel. And and being like, oh, the, here, here he is. It's Masked Deuce, famous, famous guy. And, <laughs> yeah, and, they like, just... and just pretending like we know him. And, like, it was, like, on the extra pages that they, like, explained, like, okay, this is where they are. And they lore dumped everything on the extra pages. It was so <laughs> dumb. We were like, we were like, you can do that, right? You can put in these side characters from these side novels into the main story, right? But you you can't you can't expect the readers of the main story, the main content of the main manga to go back and read this. I mean, because I mean, no, especially you know, I mean, obviously they're not writing it with a foreign audience in mind. But you know, there's always the possibility that like exactly what happened with <coughs> us, we just don't have access to that. Yeah, so we, we just felt like that wasn't a strong move. And the characters, from what I remember, they're Diamond Kingdom uh, refugees. Like, they yeah, they, they like... basically deserted the Diamond Kingdom, and the, the Diamond Kingdom officers there are <clears throat> not uh, happy with them. So it goes from Mars. Uh, who's the one with the flame spirit? Uh, Fauna. Fauna. So Mars, Fauna, who's the guy with the absorption magic? I can't I can't remember his name. It's so dumb. He's <coughs> he's another one of like the, the, the shining generals, I don't know what you call it. But they had yeah. that they had that whole panel to introduce him and they did absolutely nothing with them. So cool. I'm just gonna call him the absorption magic guy. And then the witch queen. Those are the four that each go from bad guys to good guys. And I think starting with Mars, I think Mars's turning was the most realistic where yeah. you know, they had it where Mars a concept that wasn't really used much where he had a half and half grimoire and it was through experimentation and just being somewhat mind controlled by a gem in his head Cade care to comment yeah we're bringing on Cade woo go Cade did someone say gem all right <laughs> yeah. all right here's here's your question there so I swear it's to god if it's about a woman with a gem in her head being redeemed when she was absolutely irredeemable i am gonna leave it's uh, a it's man and it wasn't unrealistic all right <laughs> so here's mars right his name is mars like the planet and so it's he has the gem in his head and it kind of like mind controls him right does he a start singing stronger than you that's the name of the song right kate you would know that'd be correct yes yes okay cool thank you <laughs> Does he, does he does he a that does he b eat a cookie cat just pull just pull one out like it's straight from the show doesn't fit with the art style just pulls one out right right it. right I'm, I'm following does he three resurrect his best friend from childhood 
who he thought was dead and who wasn't actually dead because they somehow picked her up after the experiment and then somehow found her way to Lick, who found her after the experiment, after she didn't die and they didn't dispose of the body. And then he, he revived the elf that was inside of her that was using her magic, even though her grimoire was stolen and put onto Mars, which typically losing a grimoire means losing your life, though I guess not necessarily because it's never really established in the series. And then she's being mind controlled and then he's being mind controlled, but he's not really being mind controlled because he breaks through the mind control and later he goes and mind controls the other people and he gets his childhood best friend back and then he like dies later i don't know right <clears throat> or d he eats the gem in his head and he implodes now as the resident expert for the human universe yeah <laughs> i've seen what all all the episodes every one of them even the yeah. bad ones yeah, hundred um, percent. And I, what I can say for certain is, in a standard Steve Universe episode, the answer would most likely be all of the answers. However, <laughs> I don't think that that applies in this series. Oh. So I'm going to say it's going to be uh, um, C, right? Yeah, it was yeah, three, it is C. Congrats! Three. Woo, woo! Let's see, you got it right. Congrats! Yeah. So, with with that, um, the whole ba- I, I don't want to explain the whole backstories with Mars and <coughs> fauna. Yeah, you call it? Let, 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 let's just let's sum up Witch's Forest. I mean, Witch's Forest but, is kind of the beginning of the end. But the one thing I want to touch on is at least for the first two, Mars and fauna, they like Mars was realistic. Fauna was like, okay, cool. The next guy they had with the redemption. I was not a huge fan of his quote unquote redemption. And this was also the moment where Asta. Oh, yeah. Before the fighting, which Asta... fixes Asta's arms and Asta's able to fight. And this is where he first meets the devil inside of him. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> we, were so, so, we were so happy with that. Two moments, Brandon and I each hated like <clears throat> more than the other. Um, first one being the redemption of the magic absorption guy, where he flat out describes himself as the typical fellow who likes trampling on the weak and gaining from that he loves he loves being stronger than other people he love love loves stepping on the weak and just moving up the rankings from that he is an awful person who loves just destroying anyone beneath him and all that is magically gone just because oh the gym jam my head is fixed thank you i was not a huge fan of that and the other moment that we did not that did not sit well with us was Asta encountering the devil inside of him for the first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, the you know, first buddy, time. I know you had a lot more to say on that than I did. So, in you know, in Shonen, when you typically have your first transformation due to an uncontrollable force possessing you, you sort of uh, don't be. You're not really yourself when you first transform. And I'm not saying Black Clover had to do it, but I don't think the route Black Clover went in Asta's first transformation was good either. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the example I used whenever we first read this was was Bleach with Ichigo and his hollow, right? And, you know, it's Those been, it's been forever, so I can't remember exactly. <coughs> but I, I, as far as I remember, the first time he was possessed by his hollow, um, he, he lost control of it, right? And I don't know about Naruto, but I think, Kyle, didn't you say something similar happened it's there? Similar. In the early arc, wherein they're fighting Zabuza, or, Z- yeah, Zabuza, something with, something with the Z, I think it's Zabuza, and <coughs> Haku, uh, Naruto gets really mad that he thinks Sasuke dies, and he just, he sort of goes, he sort of gets really angry and lets the inner demon take over for a moment. And that, that's, you know, that's a trope I, I don't mind in Shonen. I, I think if they do it, I think it makes sense where it's like the first time they're encountering this power, it's hard to control. But in Asta's case, he just fist fought the devil and won first I, I try. I don't know if he fist fought him, but the <laughs> devil was like, give me your body. And Asta was like, no, I got to go save my friends. And then uh, he, just, he, just, he just has it now. He, he, he just has it now. Yeah, he overturns the devil inside of him and at this point at this point at, at least consider it from our standpoint where this early on we didn't know the existence of other devils so we just assumed like it was the devil possessing him yeah or at the very least like we assumed it was like the yeah. devils were like a smaller class of like super high beings yeah right and, don't don't and, get don't get me wrong knowing everything we know now it makes more sense it does but that does not excuse the fact that it was bad in the 
yeah, it should have made more sense in the moment and out of the moment should have made it completely clear. Uh -huh. There should have been some <laughs> foreshadowing. It shouldn't be, oh, this makes sense now that I've read this. It should be, oh, I see the foreshadowing to this in this moment there. Yeah. And there's no <laughs> and foreshadowing to it because the demon is presented as, a, as this huge yeah. being. And, and they, they do reference it once where he Russell was like, well, you're short. Why'd you call me short? No, that's not foreshadowing. No, <laughs> that's, a, that's then, a callback. You need you need a foreshadowing. Not, not, it's, it it didn't work at the time, and just because later context is like okay, I can understand why it went down like that. That doesn't make it good, and that doesn't that that's not okay. <clears throat> yeah, and then just to cap off this, the whole witch scene where she took over Asta's body, and then I'll say I like Vanessa gaining Rude. Yeah, uh, I did not. Yeah, but I didn't necessarily care for the witch queen suddenly becoming a good human being after being an awful mother and mistreating Vanessa basically her whole life, torturing her into getting the power she wanted. Yeah, she's just like, um, hey, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this guy, I'm gonna make this guy kill your friends, um, and then yeah. whenever he kills your friends, I'm gonna make you watch and I'm gonna crucify them. Lol. <clears throat> and then just was like, and then she gets defeated and she's person. like, she's like. Maybe next time I see each other, we can sit down as mother and daughter. Yeah. It's like, dude, and you it, literally tried to kill her. Like, literally, like, I just read, I just read the pages. Bro. It is right there. You literally crucified her friends, bro. You were, you are, you are. Did you are, you someone are, say irredeemable mom that tries to kill her son? Daughter. Daughter. Close enough. Yeah, close enough. Uh, what's the next one? Here, Kate, you, you, you've been, you've been on here twice. Let's bring Trevor in. Trevor, Trevor. Oh, what are we talking about? Um, so basically, um, we're finishing up the Witch's Forest arc, right? Is it good or bad? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh... Uh... Wait, which arc, which arc was that? I mean, like, I, I vaguely... And remember, that's all like, the time. That's all we have time for today. Next time we'll be tackling the Goombaning up to up to the beginning. Brandon. I I sure do hope you guys enjoyed this this little recap episode and we will recap next episode as well. Uh, yeah. Bye bye. Yeah.